Well, hello, welcome back to my channel. It's Elisa coming to you from Beautifully Me and You, De Baya Mente y Tu y Yo. And you guys, today, what we're gonna be working on is cleaning up this whole Easy Debt Snowball Tracker, okay? Now, the first things first, I could flip it over, right? And just create a whole new plan on this side, but I feel like I wanna revisit some of the things that I have here and rearrange a couple of things. And also I think I'm gonna be working on a couple of home renovation projects at the same time. So you'll see how I plan on restructuring a couple of these things that I'm saving for, all right? So if that sounds like something that interests you, seeing how I use the Easy Debt Snowball Tracker to make a home renovation action plan, then let's get right into it. All right, so if you've been here before, then you already know that the Easy Debt Snowball Tracker is a way that you can actually track your debts. So you would create a snowball so that you would make minimum payments and the snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you begin to pay things off, you roll your minimum payments to the next debt and roll it to the next debt. I made a whole tutorial on how to use this tracker and I'll put the link directly up here and it's called How to Get Out of Debt. So it is a really quick way to help you to get out of debt. This product is also available in my Etsy storefront, which is linked down below. You can purchase either a digital download, which is $5, or you could purchase a physical product like this being sent to you, it's $10. And it's on this side, has debts one through six, and then the other side has debts seven through 12, okay? The difference with me is that I'm not using it to get out of debt, but I am using it to track home renovation projects that I want to save for, okay? So there's some things that I've already accomplished. Uh, let's look at all the money I put in since just November to February. I didn't even list what I added in for March. And then I got my office furniture that I needed, which you guys have seen in some of my shop blogs. If you didn't see an Etsy shop blog, I'll put a link up here. But I did set up a whole little office upstairs and so I have some furniture for that. I did um, work on the washer and dryer. Now I saved the 2000 for the washer and dryer and I purchased a washer. Thank you guys for all of your suggestions on what I should do with the money. I decided not to purchase a dryer just yet, but I did purchase a new washer. And if I, I'm saving the money for the dryer, just in case I have problems like in the next six months or so, then I'll already have the money saved. But if I don't, then I'll probably be rolling it right into one of these other projects. Jace's bed, I saved about $800 for his bed, but come to find out, I found one on Facebook Marketplace for $300. Y'all, if you've been here on the journey, then you already know, I've been, check them off, babe, check them off. Your girl's not playing no more, okay? So the next thing I'm supposed to be doing is getting flooring, which is gonna be about $8,000 for just the downstairs. And then I wanna get new faucets for my bathroom, which I'm estimating for about $500. I have a double sink. And then I also wanna get some bedroom furniture for myself for $5,000. One of the reasons why I'm redoing this whole little thing is that, first of all, I want to see, show you guys how I'm going to clean it all off. But second of all, um, I think in conjunction with working on the flooring, I do want to get save money for faucets. And I also want to save money for some ceiling fans. And I have some money left over from Jace's bed. And I thought, why not just get the ceiling fans right straight away? But I don't know. I'm kind of debating on it. So right now I'm going to be saving towards both ceiling fans, new faucets and flooring, and I'll be equally dispersing the money amongst those. When we get those three projects done, then I'll be working on bedroom furniture. So hopefully that didn't confuse you, but let's go ahead and clean off all this. And before I do, let me just jot down what dollar amounts I had planned. Okay. Since we're almost done with the month, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the notes section of my Easy Cash Budget Extended Planner that I use for my budget. And I'm just going to jot down the amounts of what it is I'm trying to save. You guys, if the light's coming in and out, it's because the storms are here. And um, right now, the sun's trying to come out from behind the clouds. I'm just glad to see it again. All right, let's see. <laughs> Flooring. Um, I had 8000 and I might need more for downstairs, but that's what we're going to start with. New faucets. I price these. So I know this is about right. And that's 500 And then bedroom furniture. And that will be 5000 And then ceiling fans. I don't think I spelled ceiling right. But anyway, ceiling fans. And that, I think I want to spend about 250 per fan. So I'm going to say 500 for that as well. All right, so that's the action plan of what it is I need to transfer onto here. So let's go ahead and clean this off first. Someone said in the comments that a magic eraser will work and I have the thin erasers. They're like magic eraser sheets. So they look like this. 
And um, these work really good to like clean around your stove or like clean your refrigerator walls, things like that. There's quite a bit of sheets in here and how you use it is you literally, like it says, wet it, squeeze it, and then just erase and you toss the sheet each time. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Let me just wet it and we'll wipe everything down. All right, so I have my little magic eraser sheet. I kind of folded it in half just to make it a little more sturdy. And we're just gonna wipe all this off. Even if you try, you wouldn't understand it. Maybe something's missing inside of you. Just a bit of sugar to that hobby bitter. Maybe you taste different. sit beside you while you're going on about your simple life all right so this one really don't even need to be tossed just yet but i'm gonna go ahead and toss it and let me get a paper towel so i could dry this off all right so we're all done with that i heard alcohol as well as um hand sanitizer works well on it as well but instead of wasting my hand sanitizer, we'll just use a little water in the magic erasers that I already had. So yeah, there's that. All right, so now that we have it all clean and ready to go, let's go ahead and work out exactly what I'm gonna be doing with my home renos. So if we have flooring 8,000, new faucets 500, bedroom furniture 5,000, and ceiling fans 500, then that's a total of $14,000. So let's say home renos $14,000. Okay, so that's gonna be the total. Um, for the first thing that I wanna work on is gonna be the ceiling fans. Wait a minute, did I just mess up again? I'm writing my name, y'all, instead of writing a doggone word ceiling, hold on. So I tore off this tiny little piece of magic eraser sheet and I'm gonna hold this just in case I need to wipe down something else. Smart thing would have been to do is just only cut it in half and I wouldn't throw it away, so. Anyway, let's not write our name this time. Ceiling, you know how to spell ceiling. C-E-I-L-I-N-G. All right, so ceiling fans, and this is primarily only gonna go in the two upstairs. I might actually put one in the office space, so maybe I'll increase this budget. If I have extra, I'll put some here, but for right now, we're only gonna say 500. And so, uh, let's see, let's put a minimum amount towards the ceiling fans of at least $150 per month, okay? And that's only because I want to make sure that I have them done by summer. So I actually have the money now because I had some extra from the bed. So I might end up purchasing some ceiling fans out of that and just zeroing out the home renovation project and crossing out this category. But we know right now, at least I want a minimum of 150 and the balance is gonna be 500 or goal 500. All right, so that's gonna be for the ceiling fans. The next one is gonna be for the faucets. This is how my home flooring always gets pushed to the side because there's always other little stuff that needs to be done. But for right now, I'm gonna say the faucets, I wanna put a minimum of at least $100 per month. And the goal is gonna be 500. And that's to replace some bathroom faucets that really need replacing. Um, so I think there's two faucets. I'm pretty sure with the labor and everything, it should be somewhere around four to $500. I'm going to shoot high because it seems like when I shot low on the washer and dryer, that messed me up. So we're going to shoot high. And then the next thing is going to be my flooring. And that one I want to put a minimum of, let's put $250 per month, which is still going to take some while. And the goal is gonna be $8,000. And the last thing that I wanna do is new bedroom furniture for myself. And I might be able to find something on Facebook Marketplace, but by the time we get here, we should have already accomplished the floorings first. And this one, I just wanna put a minimum of zero for right now because I'm gonna focus on these three minimums, but I do have a goal of 5,000. Okay, so I'm not gonna putting, be putting anything towards new bedrooms right now, but I do wanna make sure that I'm saving at least 250 for ceiling fans and faucets and 250 for flooring. So that means my minimum snowball amount right here should be $500.
every single month I need to budget for at least 500 and if I have extra then I'll throw it to the extra right here let me see how much I actually have in my home renovation right now hold on one second all right and home renovations right now I know I have a thousand dollars in the bank and actually I have another thousand dollars that's for the dryer I'm gonna put another thousand dollar placeholder because I know for sure there's two thousand dollars in the bank for this category. Okay, one thousand I'm gonna put towards the flooring, and then the other one, two, three, four, five. So I have the five hundred for the ceiling fans, you guys. Uh, let me hold off until I get to the goal of a thousand, which will be very shortly, and I'll go ahead and take the money out and get the ceiling fans and the faucets at the same time. But we know we have right now, I'll put down as of today's date. What is today's date? As of 327, I'll say that I've paid in $250 towards this with an end in balance of 250. And I've also paid 327, 250 towards this with the ending balance of 250. So these both I should be able to get sometime this month. I'm hoping I can put that 500 towards these two and knock that out. And then flooring, I already have um, 327. I have $1,000 I know for sure for flooring. And if my dryer doesn't go bad, then I might have $2,000 for this. So, so far I have an updated debt snowball tracker. Um, that reflects the home renovations that I wanna do for a total of 14,000. I'm not gonna worry about the bedroom right now. The next time that I do my cash stuffing, which will be at the end of this month, I'll have some extra to go towards debt repayment plan from last month. But I wanted to kind of set out the plan before I put the money in. So once I put that money in, I'll be putting it towards ceiling fan and faucets. I'm kind of going to break up between these two. And once I knock those two out, then I'll get on to flooring. I wanted to make sure, though, that I had the ceiling fans before summer really kicked in and hit upstairs. And the faucets have been something that's been ongoing that really just needs to be fixed. So flooring goes to the back burner yet again. <laughs> I really love how clean it looks in the beginning. You guys, all that sloppy chicken scratch all over everywhere was making me anxious when I pulled it out. So I was like, I definitely need to clean this up and like come up with a new plan on a clear spreadsheet. So yeah, if you're interested in getting yourself one of these easy debt snowball trackers, they're super affordable, head over to my Etsy store and go ahead and get you one. But other than that, just know that I'm on the move now, okay? Hopefully by the end of summer, I can have my flooring. I do have quite a bit of other things going on. As you guys know, I'm paying for the repairs on my daughter's car. Um, and I have a couple of other projects that I'm doing. I'm, we're planning travel. So yeah, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that I don't even talk about on video. But just know I'm gonna try to find that $14,000 somewhere and get these projects done by the end of the year. That was always the goal. My, my um, home renos before used to be $16,800. So I've already knocked some of that down by just getting the washer and dryer, getting the office furniture, getting Jace a bid for the low low. So we're down all the way to 14,000 and I added something on. I added on the ceiling fans that wasn't even on there before. So we're winning small chisels, ch 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 small chisels and we're getting there. All right, so I'm gonna put this away, but we will be revisiting it again soon. But I do wanna talk about something that's really important where someone asked me a question and it sparked a conversation within me. So I'm sure it probably is the right time to share it with you guys as well. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna see if I can add the question onto the screen. This is a question posed by Della Juan. And it was on a video that I had from my March budget and cash stuff for week one and two. So it was a recent video. And Della Juan, which I don't know is female or male, asked a question and said, I have a question. This is in the comments. I have cash budgeted for a year and a half. I had money to cover my monthly expenses and things came up in life, but I didn't save any money in the bank. What am I doing wrong? I got a promotion, salary pay this past summer, and it's like living check to check. No savings and my big bills, student loans are still due and untouched. Y'all help me. Oh, help me y'all. That's what it says. Help me y'all. This question goes in line with another question that I received as well, but I thought we'd start with this one and then we'll lead up to any other questions that I screenshot that I wanted to answer. And I might do like this Q&A type video at the end of videos, just in case someone needs like a little bit of help or something in the comment section, instead of writing it all out in the comments, y'all, I'm not a texter, okay? Your girl was born in the wrong era. She likes to pick up the phone and talk to people. So if I'm not sending you a voice message over on Instagram, 
I'm probably going to be addressing some comment that you have here at the end of a video or doing like a random Q&A, okay? If that's something you guys want, let me know. Otherwise, drop your question down below and I might just drop it in a video. The question from Delawan brought up this thought for me. Cash budgeting is so different from savings. Those are two totally different things, okay? And one can aid the other, but it doesn't mean that they are the exact same thing. Cash budgeting is about telling your money where to go and also having the money in tow, in hand, right? So you can see when you're actually done paying for groceries and you have no more grocery money left, or you're done spending for fast food and you have no more spending left. Or let's say you do have some left and now you know you've cut back on your fast food spending because you budgeted for $50 for the month in your cash budgeting program and you put $50 in your little cash envelope and when you got done, you still had $20 the next pay period. You know you did well and you only spent 30. So cash budgeting is really about seeing where your money is going. Give it every dollar a home so they, you know exactly where you're gonna spend out of each category, okay? Also, a part of cash budgeting is having sinking funds where you save for specific expenses that are going to come up in the future. So you might have a vacation fund. And with that vacation fund, you take a certain amount of money each pay period and you stuff it down into your vacation envelope because you know you're planning on going on a trip to Disney World next year. For me, I have a homeowners association fund. And so I'll put small amounts into that fund because I know in the beginning of the year, my home association dues are due. Some people save for Amazon Prime accounts because they know they're going to need to pay that. But sinking funds for me are like little small savings accounts for future expenses. So this still isn't a part really of saving. Cash envelopes you're using in your day-to-day -day expenses. So this might be groceries, um, dining out, coffee, date night, things like that, that you're putting money away each pay period so you have a budgeted amount, set amount that you can do for weekend fund for instance, but you go out and spend that money over that whole next week into the next pay period. And if you have anything extra, then that's where you get a chance to decide what you're going to do. But overall, you're planning on spending what's in your cash envelopes on your day-to-day -day expenses. So that too is not a part of savings. Now, don't get me wrong. Either one of these categories can end up being savings. And I'm going to give you an example. If you have cash envelopes and you don't end up spending all of the money by the end of the pay period, then you could take that money out and roll it over into a savings challenge, okay? Savings challenges are gonna allow you to save money, whether it's towards your emergency fund or whether it's just additional savings overall. That's what you can use a savings challenge for. Like for instance, when I just did my whole debt tracker, those things are so that I can make those home renovations on my home. Now, are those long-term savings? No. Those are really like me saving up money so that I can purchase these specific items that I need to do for my house repairs. See what I'm saying? So it is important that you have a savings plan in action. And that might be reducing some of your sinking funds or saving the extra from your cash envelopes at the end of the pay period, anything you didn't spend goes towards savings. And that's how you can accumulate money in the bank or into an emergency fund. So when unexpected expenses come up, you actually have something to lean into. That question leads right into a question that I received from Twin Mommy 48 She said, evening, Miss Salisa. I just received your first weekly planner and I can't wait to start putting it to work. Love what you do. Question, any suggestions on saving when your fixed expenses take up the majority of your incoming income? So this is kind of back to what Delawan was saying. So for this question, you either need to cut back on your expenses or earn extra income. And I know that sounds kind of cutthroat, but that really is the answer. So first I start by reviewing all of my spending and see if there's anything I can cut back, any subscription services I can cancel, any extra frivolous spending like on Amazon Prime. If I can get rid of some of those things in order to have extra money, then I would do that. Okay. That's number one. Number two, I would look at all of my variable spending. So everything that I'm spending on cash envelopes, whether it's groceries, gas, fast food, and see if there's any way I can chisel some of that back. That's the easiest, the two easiest ways to cut back. Once you do that, then you have no other places you can cut 
then you're going to probably need to earn some extra income. I have a video that I'll link up here about some side hustle ideas. It was a pretty lengthy video, but maybe you can look through there and see if you can find some ways to generate just a little bit of extra income that can go towards things outside of your regular basic expense. I'm the last comment, but the other comment I wanted to address kind of goes in line with this. Someone asked me about how many savings accounts do I have? How many accounts do I carry? And what I do might be different than how you set yours up. But since I first started cash budgeting, I had one checking and one savings account. I recently opened a business checking and a business savings. Okay, so I have two checking, two savings. I personally like keeping my sinking funds in the sinking funds. Okay, because too much cash in my account makes me start thinking I can start moving money around and spending on fast food and buying something extra from Amazon that I do not need. Okay, <laughs> so that's how I like to roll. However, I do do bill condensings because I don't want to have all that cash and I'll put placeholders, which are fake bills, something like this into the binder. When I put that $500 bill in, I take $500 and take it over to my savings account. So I know if I need to take this $500 out, I need to go get the $500 from the savings account and put in, okay, towards this particular category. So where I don't have a bunch of separate savings accounts that are linked with every single category listed, which I know you can do that through some banks. I think Capital One is one of them, but I don't actually do that. I do use the placeholders as kind of like a holding space of what I have in my savings account. Now, do I have more in savings than what's in my placeholders? Yes, because my emergency fund is in savings. I also have a little bit extra float money from my business in savings. So there are some extra funds in there. So let's say I need the $1,000 out from the dryer that I have the $1,000 placeholder in home rentals. I will take that placeholder out and go get $1,000 out of the bank and go buy the dryer that I need. Okay. And also there are times when I'll finish a savings challenge, like putting the puzzle together. I have a savings challenge titled that. I have $1,500 in that savings account that I already know belongs to this. So once we complete this challenge and I'm going to reallocate this money, I would take this $1,500 out of the bank, put it with this cash and we'll redisperse it somewhere else. So that's how I work my plan. Trust me, my budget plan does not have to be yours. It's the beauty of cash budgeting. It's the beauty of budgeting, period. You can do it the way that you want to do it. You should check out some other channels that have um, multiple savings accounts if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, I don't offer that here, but I know that there's a lot of ways to do digital sinking funds and you separate, set up separate accounts for every single cash envelope that you have. I don't do it that way, but there's a lot of people that do. And so you can find that here on YouTube just by searching that. Digital sinking funds. That's all you really got to look up, okay? All right, I think I've talked enough, you guys. <laughs> I answered a few questions because I was thinking, is it worth a whole separate dedicated Q&A video? Not today, but if you guys have some future questions that you wanna ask, go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below and then that way I'll know to put a Q&A together with whatever questions you have about budgeting or need help with. Also, you'll be able to ask them on the live once I schedule that, okay? Maybe we'll do Q&As on the live as well. If you made it all the way to the end of this video and you're a real one, go ahead and put this one single emoji right here, letting me know that you made it. I appreciate you guys for watching me restructure my whole debt plan and answer a few Q&A questions, mainly about is cash budgeting the same as savings? We now know the answer is no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget, subscribe, hit the um, notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. Don't forget to like this video and share this video with someone else because maybe they'll be inspired to set up their own home renovation project, or maybe they need the answers to some of these questions that people have been asking in the comment section. I'm sure if one person asks, many people need to know. So yeah, share the video with them as well. All right, you guys, I think that is everything for today. Let me know also in the comments if you have some different opinions or something else that you can add to the conversation, because trust me, everybody's reading everybody's comments and each one teach one. I'm not the guru, right? I'm just sharing what I know, but we all have something that we can share. So share a tip down below if you can, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Take care.